No. Guys, don't get me wrong. Technically, the Exodus 990 is less powerful, aka inferior, to the Snapdragon variant. But we're all forgetting that the 990 is still a flagship chip. It's still capable of high performance. It's just less optimized. And as a result, we get a less powerful chip. And on top of that, worse battery life. I used my Note 20 Ultra for a week and I didn't notice any lag or stutter. The only stutter I noticed was when it switched to 60 Hertz. The phone seemed slower, not because the refresh rate is lower, it took longer to load apps in on the 60 Hz, I swear to god. Which is kind of weird, I mean it can be fixed with updates and such, but the point is, you're not going to notice any lag with the Exynos 990. All these big YouTubers, they're making it out like, oh it's so laggy, oh it's so slow. And that may be true of the S20 Ultra, like, it actually does throttle after hours of gaming. But this is the Note 20 Ultra, and although it uses the same chip, we have a better heatsink, which means no throttling. At least that's what Samsung tells us. Or someone told me, I don't know. It was from a reliable source. The point is, I played for an hour and I didn't notice any throttling. Maybe I have to play longer to notice some throttling, but you know, I'm not a big mobile gamer. I don't have time to hover over my desk with a camera filming from the top, just gaming nonstop. Like, if you really want to, I'll do a video like that. The only problem I have with Exynos is the battery life. Not just this. Note 10 had the same issue, but wasn't that bad. Note 9 had an issue. Note 8. Actually, the Note 8 didn't. Even though it had a small battery, I was able to get a decent amount of screen on time. So yes, it's true that the optimization of these Exynos chips have gotten worse as years went by. Which brings us to the 990. In my country, it costs exactly $1,300, so it's not more expensive than the US models. I'm actually paying more for the US model because I bought the 512 gigabytes and import fees that will come later on. So guys, I'm going to keep it really simple. If you want to experience the latest Samsung device and you don't care that much about battery life, you're not a huge gamer and you don't do heavy tasks, but when you do need to do those tasks, you know the phone can handle it. Then go ahead and buy the Exynos variant. Who cares at this point? Like, oh, it's an inferior device. Forget Geekbench. Forget Antutu. They're just numbers. They don't mean anything. It's all about how the phone performs in your hands. But if you're a heavy user and you game a lot and you do a bunch of stuff and you're not around charges a lot, then no 20 Ultra Exynos is not for you. I would look at maybe OnePlus 8 Pro or wait for the OnePlus 8T Pro, I don't know. Basically a phone with the Snapdragon 865 or 865 Plus. Like the Realme X50 Pro, which I'm selling by the way, if you want to buy it from me, uh, hit me up in an email or join my Discord server, contact me and I'm getting, having a bit of trouble selling it in my country because there's no Hebrew. But anyway, that's my opinion. You can give me all the hate you want. I'll argue with you in the comments, but I know there's lo a lot of Exynos defenders out there which are gonna agree with me. And I'm not defending Exynos, I'm just saying it's not that big a deal to most people. Let's be real, sure, the whole Exynos drama has dropped sales, but at the end of the day it's not gonna affect sales that much. Because most people who go out and buy a Samsung, they don't look at all these YouTube videos like, oh Exynos versus Snapdragon, and all that. they don't look at that stuff. They just go out, see a shine looking phone, they don't... The, you know, the rich guys, they buy it, they're like, oh, it's good, you know, that's the reality. So, no matter how much we're going to stir up the, the Exynos drama on YouTube, it's not going to make that big of an impact in the real world. So, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Peace.